I hope y'all are watching this with the lights on. Before we get into today's video, I just want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. Today's video and a few others that I'm gonna be doing is extra spooky and creepy, but spooky and creepy because it is so real. I mean, these are real stories we're gonna be talking about. And I literally believe that the truth is always scarier than fiction. And so today we are going to be talking about the case of Annalise Michelle. Do you guys remember the 2005 movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose? That movie was like based on and had a lot of reenactments of the real life story of Annalise Michelle. Spoiler alert, you know I like to tell y'all the story first and then tell y'all at the end what I think and I still will do that. I absolutely believe in all of this stuff. Like I believe in possessions. I believe in all of this stuff. But when it comes to a possession, there is a protocol that priests or people that are doing an exorcism have to follow. And I want you to keep this in mind as we go into this story. The protocol that they typically do is they send the person to a physical doctor and a psychologist. They wanna make sure that it's not anything physical going on with the person and they want to make sure that it's not anything psychological like a mental illness where people think that they're possessed and they're not. They wanna, they wanna get all that out of the way before they go into the spiritual aspect of it. But four of the telltale signs signs that a person is demonically possessed. And we're not just talking about, you know, having a bad day, throwing a fit. A demonically possessed is knowledge of foreign languages that the person hasn't studied. So meaning the person is speaking in a language that they never knew before and they're speaking it fluently. The second thing is knowledge of hidden things, meaning this person knows information that they shouldn't know. When this person starts spe speaking an old school Latin that isn't even used anymore and very fluently, and then they start telling you about things that happened in your childhood that nobody knows about or revealing secrets that nobody's ever heard before, these are two of the four signs. The third one is extraordinary strength. So. A person is speaking in a foreign language. They're revealing hidden truths. They're picking up things that no human their size should be capable of picking up or jumping off of or having this like supernatural strength. And then the fourth one is the thing that you see in most of the movies and that's the aversion to sacred things. You know, like in the movies when somebody holds up a cross and they're like, things that are of Christ or of a biblical nature or somebody's reading out of the Bible, the person flips out. So those four things, that brings me to the case of Annalise Michelle. Now, Annalise Michelle was born on September 21st, 1952 in West Germany to her parents, Joseph and Anna. Their first child, which was a girl named Martha, passed away at the age of eight from a rare kidney disease. And Annalise's parents would go on to have four more daughters after Martha and Annalise was included in that. So she had three living sisters that she grew up with. Now, Annalise, by all accounts, was a very great, well-behaved young woman. She was the daughter that helped her mom with anything and everything, 
did not talk back. She was very religious. Her family practiced the Catholic faith. And so she went to like all of the masses, all of that. Annalise's friends said she was a well-adjusted, cheerful spirit who enjoyed having fun with her friends, but was also very serious about her schoolwork and religious practices. And everything seemed pretty normal with Annalise and her parents were very proud of her and they were able to trust and depend on her. However, their worlds were a little bit shaken when Annalise had what they considered to be like an episode at school in 1968 when Annalise was just 16 years old. Annalise was found at her school wandering around staring straight ahead in a trance-like state. She was completely dazed and out of it. When they were able to get Annalise to come to, she had no memory of the episode and Annalise just kind of chucked it up to, well, I was just tired. A year later in August of 1969, Annalise had a kind of a similar episode where she woke straight up out of bed while she was sleeping and she had been in this trance and she realized that she had wet the bed. It is said her body then went through a series of convulsions causing her to shake uncontrollably. And shortly after this incident, Annalise came down with tuberculosis and pneumonia and was hospitalized. She was very, very sick. She was able to make a full recovery though, and she was released from the hospital. After this second episode, and once she wasn't sick anymore, Annalise's parents took her to see a neurologist who diagnosed her with temporal lobe epilepsy, which is a disorder that causes seizures, loss of memory, and visual and auditory hallucinations. And at this point, it really seemed like Annalise's parents were going down the medical route. Again, they took her to a neurologist to see like, what is going on with her here? Then they got that diagnosis and they were thinking, okay, well, maybe this medication that she is now on, this is gonna help. Now, by the 1960s, exorcisms were a very rare thing or a rare occurrence in the Catholic Church. However, the spike of like all of these movies, including the exorcism that came out in the 1970s, piqued people's interest again. In June of 1970, Annalise had a third seizure at a psychiatric hospital where she had been staying. Now, after she was put into this hospital, she was prescribed anti-convulsion drugs, like literally medication in order to make her stop seizing. However, it did not stop her seizing her body would still go into convulsions and she was still like having these physical reactions. Annalise also said that when she would pray with her rosary, she began to see devil faces. In September of 1972, Annalise was examined by another neurologist who says she could not find any evidence of illness in Annalise's EEG. Yet the doctor still prescribed her a new anti-convulsion medication. So you can only imagine the parents when they're taking her to the doctor, there's a whole new neurologist, okay? They're going for their second opinion that we know of. Could have been more, but definitely the second of opinion. The neurologist is looking at the scan and saying, I don't see anything. I don't see anything on this scan that explains why she's having these physical reactions. At this point, Annalise was still trying to live as normal of a life as possible though. And in 1973, Annalise went off to college. Now her classmates described her as withdrawn and very religious. And later that same year, even though it seemed like Annalise was doing everything she could to take her medication, to get back on track and to live a normal life, she began experiencing what the doctors said was depression and she said she hallucinated while praying and that she was hearing voices while she was praying telling her that she was damned and that she would rot in hell like whoa can you imagine like actually like you're praying you're praying to the lord and you're hearing like these audible voices telling you that you're Ooh. Annalise's treatment still did not improve her health and her depression only got worse. Long-term treatment also did not help and Annalise became completely frustrated with her medical care after taking all this medicine for five years. And then at this point, Annalise's delusions became so extreme. It is said that she would scream and believe that she was possessed. She would rip all of her clothes off like butt naked, run around screaming. She would 
crawl under the beds, she would hide, she would crawl under tables, bark like a dog. It is said that her mother caught her after she had urinated on the floor and was licking it up. Her family would catch her eating bugs. She bit the head off of a bird and one of the times when she climbed under the table and barked, she did that for two days, nonstop. Under the table for two days, barking like a dog. She did a lot of other compulsive things, but you can only imagine how terrified her family was seeing her acting like this. And then Annalise became what doctors said was intolerant of things that were related to the Christian faith, such as the crucifix. Annalise visited Sam Domino with a family friend who regularly organized Christian pilgrimages. This is when Annalise's own friend said she knew that Annalise was possessed by a demon. She was demonically possessed. She said that Annalise could not walk past a crucifix at all, and she was completely unable to be around holy water, be touched by holy water, or drink holy water. A priest that was with them said that Annalise had told him that she was unable to enter the shrine. She approached it with the greatest hesitation, then said that the soil burned like fire and she simply could not stand it. At this point, not only Annalise's family, but her friends and the whole community became convinced that she was possessed by demons. This wasn't just one person, two person. This wasn't somebody that was just having, you know, seizures and maybe it was a mix up. This was somebody that was showing actual signs of other things. However, when they took Annalise to the priest, the priest declined to see her and he informed the family that exorcisms required the bishop's permission. In the Catholic Church, official approval for an exorcism is granted when the person strictly meets the set criteria and is considered to be suffering from possession and under demonic control. But unfortunately, Annalise's symptoms continued to progress and get worse. And at this point, she even became violent. Then in November of 1973, Annalise began to be treated with a new anti-seizure medication. And she was put on a mood stabilizer as well. However, her seizures did not stop. None of the symptoms stopped and she continued to get worse. At this point, she was growling, saying that she was seeing demons and she would begin to throw things. At one point, she even picked up her sister and threw her completely across the room into a wall. You remember those things we were talking about at the beginning of the video about the supernatural strength? Yeah, she threw her sister across the room into the wall. But then the family got what they believed was a break. And this is when the priest, Father Ernest Alt, declared that Annalise did not look like an epileptic and that he did not observe her experiencing seizures. Father Alt believed that she was indeed suffering from demonic possession and urged the local bishop to allow an exorcism. In a letter to Father Alt from 1975, Annalise wrote, I am nothing. Everything about me is vanity. What should I do? I have to improve. You pray for me. And also, allegedly, Annalise told this priest that she wanted to suffer for other people, but what she was going through was just so cruel. In September of 1975, the bishop finally granted permission to perform an exorcism, but he also ordered for this to be kept a secret. And I've done a lot of research on these types of things, and people always say, if, if this is true, if this really happens, happens, why don't we hear about it? Just like back then, even still to this day, when a bishop or a priest says that it's okay to do a exorcism on a person and that they really are demonically possessed versus they're just having like a mental breakdown or they're having mental illness or a psychosis. If it is a demonic possession, it has to be kept a secret. They will not allow any cameras because they want to protect the person. However, after the bishop said, okay, yes, she does need an exorcism, go ahead and do it, they began to get ready for the ritual. Father Renz performed the first session on September 24th. At this point, Annalise requested for her parents stop taking her to the doctor. Remember, this? she'd been going to the doctor for years, taking all this medication, and she told her parents, stop taking me. Don't take me to the doctor anymore. I want to be fully dependent on God, and I want God to heal me. However, although Annalise did not want Want to go to the doctors anymore that first exorcism that was performed didn't work 
A total of 67 exorcisms were performed on Annalise. I'm not sure exactly what happened, why there were so many. I would have to guess, and that's all I'm doing, so take it with a grain of salt, that they weren't able to complete them because it got too crazy. However, those people there obviously believed in what they were doing because one to two exorcisms per week, lasting like four hours, were done on her. And this is where they got the audio recording of Annalise speaking in Latin that had been, hasn't been used in years, that she didn't know, speaking in unknown languages. You can actually hear her voice change where she's talking like herself in German to then a demon speaking through her. They performed these exorcisms on her through 10 months. I mean, almost a year. You can only imagine how worn out Annalise's body was, her mind was, her heart was. And at this point, she actually stopped eating. She refused to eat anymore, and it is said that she thought that she was starving the demons out of her. There are all kinds of photos of Annalise where she's got bruises all over her and she's so skinny and drawn up. Man, it is sad to see. Now, I, I don't know what all happened back then. I wasn't there, obviously. But no matter what happened, like seeing these photos of her are just heartbreaking. On July 1st of 1967, Annalise passed away in her home at just 23 years old. The autopsy report said that the cause of death was malnutrition and dehydration from almost a year in a state of near starvation while these exorcisms were performed. They say that she weighed only 66 pounds at 23 years old. She was literally nothing but bones and she was so bruised up. Oh my gosh, she was just tortured, 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 tortured. They even found that her knees were broken and they said that her knees were broken from just praying obsessively and just, oh my gosh, it, it's, it's so sad to think about it and scary and horrific. However, after her passing and this autopsy, the state prosecutor said that her life could have been saved and that if she would have been taken to the doctor just one week before she passed, they could have saved her life. And in 1967, the police came after Annalise's parents and two of the priests. They were then arrested and charged with the death of Annalise and they pled not guilty. And the parents of Annalise, as well as the two priests, had the same attorney that was paid for by the church. Now, even though they were coming after the four of them, Criminally, the state did not want them to be put in jail or prison. They were actually recommending that the priest be have to pay like this big giant fine and that the mother and father, they had suffered enough. They didn't want them to be in trouble, but they felt like legally they needed to be held responsible. And if they don't believe in the spiritual realm, I can understand that. And I actually think that that's fair. 
in a non-spiritual realm setting, right? If I'm a prosecutor and I feel like something should be done, but they've also suffered enough, okay, a fine and arresting you because you did something bad. They're doing their job, but also, I don't know, did they take into account everything that they had done before then? This, this is a hard one. The trial began on March 30th of 1978, and the court drew intense interest by the public. Doctors testified that Annalise wasn't possessed, stating that the manifestations of demonic possession were a psychological effect of her strict religious upbringing as well as her epilepsy. The defense argued that the exorcism was legal and that the German constitution protected citizens in their religious beliefs. The defense played those tapes, and there is a lot more of those tapes that you can hear. I will leave it linked down in the description box if you guys want to go and listen yourself. If you do, come back to the comment section and tell me what you think, especially if you don't believe any of this. I want to know, too, what y'all think that is. But anyways, while they played these tapes, they were showing, like, the courts that it sounded like demons arguing within her. This was all Annalise. This, these sounds were coming out of Annalise. Um. <laughs> Both priests claimed that the demons actually identified themselves, and some of them were Lucifer, Cain, you remember from Cain and Abel, Judas, even Hitler. They also told the courts that Annalise was finally freed from this demonic possession right before she passed away. In April of 1978, the four of them, Annalise's parents and the two priests, were indeed convicted of negligent homicide and they were given suspended prison sentences. Because the church approved of the exorcism, they drew public and media attention. And in a conference seven years later, the German bishops retracted the claim that she was possessed, which is like, hmm, hmm. What, do you not think she was possessed? Are you peddling to the media? Ooh, I, I wanna figure out, wh wh why'd you do that? Annalise's grave site still to this day um, att attracts a lot of attention. People go there just to see it. The number of officially sanctioned exorcisms decreased in Germany following this incident. And then get this, on June 6th of 2013, Annalise's family home was completely engulfed in flames and basically just like burned to the ground. And a lot of people believe that that has to do with the exorcism. I don't know about that because, I mean, it happened so long after the situation, but I know I wouldn't want to live in that home after that. I'd be having to get my stuff and get up out of there, honey. Don't even bring no Ouija board or none of that stuff in my house. Like, no, 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 no. Don't even want it in there. You know what I mean? I would have probably moved out and burned it to the ground myself if I was the family. Um, what do I think about this? I see a lot of stuff online where people are really upset with the parents and think that they neglected her. She had been through so much. And I think the parents, from what we know, okay, I don't know them, it seems like they tried everything. You know, you're at your wit's end. I don't know if any of you guys have ever had, and I hope not, I hope not, and if, and if you haven't, I hope you never do in the name of Jesus, but a sick child. I'm telling you what, I saw my son with a toothache. And he ended up having an abscess that was in the gum. We couldn't see it. We didn't know that's what it was. And of course, it began to cause some excruciating pain on a Friday, right? That hurt so bad to see him like that. I would have done just about anything to relieve him of that pain that was shooting up his head. And like, I, I just can't imagine. It seems like to me. Her parents did everything. They took her to all the neurologists, to the doctors, had scan after scan after scan. And she said she was tired and she wanted to do it this way. And that's the way she did it. Is it horrific to think about? Yes, but I, if what we know is true, I definitely can't point my finger at the family. Because of that audio, I mean, I tend to think that it was a demonic possession. So what do you think? You think it's real? You think it was just a severe case of mental illness that made her have supernatural strength, an aversion to uh, things of Christian faith, speaking in other languages, knowing things that 
she's not supposed to know like do you, what do you think you think it's just all a big coinky dink everything ain't a coinky dink but i want to know what y'all think even if you don't agree i want to know down below I know some of y'all know that that's real though. So y'all let me know what y'all think. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for being here. And I will see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.